Yeah. You want to like him, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. You say gangsters over here, Straight man. Straight gangsters. Uh. 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 Yeah. yeah, good morning and welcome back. You are listening to Scout Team Radio. We bring it to you hot and live each and every morning. I am one of your gracious hosts. They call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. Yes, all of that is true. And the man on the other microphone is the biggest Florida State Seminoles fan I have ever met. We know him as... America. America. Wait for it. Wait for it. You, you still think Anthony Mack is coming back to the show? <laughs> well, Chris America, welcome aboard. Uh, no, no, no. You, you no, no, no. failed I'm, your I'm, intro. I'm, I'm not, I did not fail my intro. You, you did. Said, you failed. You failed miserably. You're the biggest Florida State Seminole fan. I was waiting for Anthony Mack. I, don't, I was wondering why you played my music, but, you know, you have fat fingers. So I thought maybe you went to hit Anthony's intro music and hit mine instead. Nope. Absolutely not. I, I won't the, stand for this. You're the biggest I won't stand uh, for this Florida kind State of Seminoles insult. fan I know. I will not stand for this kind of insult in the morning. I just I just won't. So I'm going to sit down. Oh, well, Chris America, Actually, welcome aboard. A little Would behind like the scenes. To... Little mm-hmm. behind the scenes, I was already sitting down. Oh, good. Wow. Thank you for that. You know what this feels like, Loudbeard? What does it feel like? It feels like going out and purchasing cocaine, you know, which you know you and I like to do and then being sold brown sugar. You ever uh, had that happen to you before, Loudbeard? No, no. That I don't. That example is unrelatable in so many different ways. Mm, well, it's relatable to a woman in Northern Ireland. She called the cops. She said, "I got some brown sugar, and I was looking for some." Okay. True story, bro. All right, coming in hot this morning. Wow. Well, wow. you know, you, know. you came off the, t- the top of a cage. Not even the top of the top ropes. You straight up came up top of the cage with that just disgusting insult to me. I, I feel like I am owed an apology. Now, I'm not going to give you an apology. I, I apologize for not apologizing. That, I'll do that. But you will not get an apology from me. And I, I'm thinking... Maybe this brown sugar situation, it's just got you upset, right? Like, you're upset because it's happened to you, and you're, it's very relatable to what's yes. happened with this young lady from Ireland or Northern Ireland, Ireland, wherever you said she was from. Now, Chris America, I have to ask you, do you think that Johnny Manziel had a brown sugar problem, and maybe that's why he was kicked out of the CFL? I'm just asking this straight, honest question right here. He may have had a brown sugar problem, but probably... Actually, you know what? I was going to say probably not, but I can totally see Johnny Manziel getting his hands into some brown sugar. And we're still talking about cocaine, right? Uh, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was talking about. Oh, boy. Your guy, Johnny Manziel, man. What is what is he doing over there? He gets kicked out of the CFL band. He's just not good. I feel like he's one of the most overrated players of all time. I was never that impressed with him. In college, was he exciting? Was he electric? Did he show flashes? Sure, he did all of those things, but there was never a time where I was like, "This guy's gonna make it." I don't know. He was Kyler Murray before Kyle, Kyler Murray was no. a thing. No, no, stop! Don't compare him to a guy that was drafted in the first round in baseball and then probably gonna be drafted in the first round in football. It's I, I could give you, I could give you Baker Mayfield, but I won't give you Kyler Murray. Okay, we'll we'll do Baker Mayfield, but Baker Mayfield's actually done something good on the NFL yes. field. Uh, Johnny Menzel, man, he's a total train wreck now. Getting kicked out of the CFL, we don't even know what it is. It's very tight lipped. Uh, I'm sure there's some non disclosure type things going on over there with the CFL and Johnny Menzel, but it it had to have been something bad because he broke contract, he broke the agreement, and now he's no longer eligible to be a player in the CFL. Uh 
I don't know. I guess this is typical Johnny Manziel, huh? Typical, man. I don't know. He didn't stay away long enough for me to feel like he's gotten his act together. I think he was gone for, like, what, like eight months, basically a full season. And then he's signing with the CFL, and he's back in. And I don't know, man. I, for one, just i am over the whole Johnny Manziel experiment. I think we've given him way too much attention and way too much time. So with that being said, I saw an article uh, on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. Uh, you should check it out. They have some good articles there that said, if Johnny Menzel gets picked up by the Alliance, would he instantly be the best quarterback in the Alliance? No. And I, <laughs> I, I kind of knew that that would be your answer. So would he be better than Christian Hackenberg? Well, yeah. I mean, he'd be the best quarterback maybe on the Memphis Express. Maybe the... Atlanta legends, but no, not the league. That belongs to one Garrett Gilbert. All right. Look at you, Chris America, coming in hot with your hot yes. takes this morning. The The whole Johnny Manziel thing, man, it, it's kind of sad because this dude had did have potential, and if he was a hard worker and cared about making himself better, he, he could have made it in the NFL. But... You know, the story goes where he liked to party. He was kind of a, a privileged young man that didn't really care to work at his craft. And when talent like that comes into the NFL, it leaves pretty quickly. It doesn't stick around. you got to work hard. These guys aren't messing around. Nobody wants to put up with your crap. So now the NFL doesn't want you. The CFL doesn't want you. This was your chance to go to the CFL, prove that you were, you were reformed and get back so man it's it's a total disgrace and i actually i hope that the alliance doesn't pick him up like i don't like just move on from this guy he's done we don't need any of that yes like i said i'm i'm over the whole johnny manzel experiment mainly because of what you talked about he's a guy that has a lot of athleticism a lot of good talent and he used that to kind of get his way through high school get his way through college as much as people say the sec defenses are great and they are but they suck against scrambling quarterbacks. That's why Dan Mullen was able to come in, put in a good spread offensive system, and they went back to being semi-close to being what the Florida Gators were. And you notice that the most successful quarterbacks in the SEC are these athletic scrambling quarterbacks. And Manziel took advantage of that again. I don't know, man, but Loudbird, he's going to need a job pretty soon if he wants a one of these new Samsung Galaxy phone foldable foldables. Have you heard of these? No, I haven't. So it's a phone that has a 7.3 inch display. That's pretty impressive. That's like it's, a computer, like a tablet. Yeah, it is a tablet. So they made it to where you can fold it, downsize it down to a phone, and it's going to cost you only $2,000. Okay. So it's basically a tablet that folds that also acts as a phone. Yes. $2,000. That's not bad. You no, just take, like a second mortgage for, on your house. No, come on now. The the iPhone X is like, or the XS or whatever they call it now, the, the latest iPhone, if you get the one with a lot of gigabytes and all that, it's like twelve ninety nine. I mean, those things are super expensive. All they do is they throw you on a, a payment plan where you're paying sixty nine ninety nine a month over two years, and all of a sudden it's not a big deal. And everybody goes to these phone stores and buys these things. So, yeah, I mean, $2,000 is not as, as expensive as, as eh, really, it's not that bad compared to some of these other phones. Though, is anybody giving up their iPhone for a Samsung? Probably no, not. Nobody's never going to give up their iPhone for a Samsung. But I guess I could see it if you want a tablet and your phone is old. Maybe you just go with that so that way you kind of get the best of both worlds. And tablets are generally around that price, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, you could get you can get them cheaper than that. So, like, you're basically paying what you would pay for a new tablet and a new phone combined for the combination of the two that folds. So, yeah, it's got to come I, down in price too, right? Like, that's the the initial price. In six months, it's got to be like a thousand bucks, right? It's you mean when, like when nobody buys it? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yep. You know, I technology dies like that. I just can't wait till we get back to where cell phone companies are giving phones away again. Because I remember in the late 90s, phones started out cheap, and then they started getting more and more expensive when they had, like, the flip phone and the Razor and the, what was that, that sidekick that 
Um, what's her name? I'm trying to think of her name. Paris Hilton was, was you know, trying to push down our throats. And we were like, oh, man, cell phones are so expensive. And then they started giving those phones away. And that was part of your, your deal, right? You just sign up with them and we'll give you this free Razor, Motorola Razor. Oh, yeah. And then the smartphones came out. And those started off fairly expensive. And they started getting more and more and more. And I can't wait for us to go back to where they're just giving them away to us just so we sign up with them. Well, it seems like now the the shtick is the the buy one get one free deal. Like, so if you're going in, say you go in with a, a spouse or a significant other, and it's like, okay, well, all you have to do is pay nine ninety nine for one phone, and you will throw in the other one free as long as you sign up for a two year contract. Like, is that really a good deal? Because you're still paying a thousand dollars for for an iPhone? Mm, no, no, it's not. But you get two iPhones for a thousand dollars, so you feel like you're making a better deal. I mean, it's kind of a crazy world we live in. Now you have teenagers. Yeah, I do. Is a hand-me-down phone the same as like hand-me-down clothes? Like, no kid wants to go to school with a hand-me-down phone. Uh, yes, but they gotta suck it up and do it anyway, just like hand-me-down clothes. Sometimes that happens. The problem with the, the phones with the teenagers is the screens crack so easy, right? And these teenagers are so irresponsible, they're dropping phones left and right. And so eventually the screen cracks, and so you're like, well, you can get my hand-me-down without a broken screen, or you can keep yours with the broken screen because I'm not paying to get it fixed because all you're going to do is break it again. So you better suck it up, Buttercup, and figure out which one you want. And if you don't want to hand me down, you can sit there with your, your little uh, cuts from your glass shards on your finger from that broken screen you got because I ain't, I ain't fixing it and I ain't replacing it. That's how it goes around here. So what you're saying is the Alliance of American Football shouldn't take a hand-me-down Johnny Manziel. No, absolutely not. He's he's not worth it, man. He's like an iPhone 3G right now or whatever With they a had broken back. screen case and the yeah. battery dies in like five minutes. Yeah, yep, that's 100%. That's your Johnny Manziel, man. That's all you get out of that guy. All right, Chris America, that's all Johnny Manziel I can talk about. I can't stand this dude. And I, I actually thought he was a decent player coming out, and I thought he could do something. But to me, it was just... A waste. He was a just a wasted player. It's do you, terrible. Do you want some brown sugar instead? No, I don't like, want any brown you, sugar. Get you over? Did it get you over it? Nope, absolutely not. Now, um, other news. We'll talk. I'm going to stick with quarterbacks. That'll be our theme for the this morning. We'll have a couple quarterback conversations. The Eagles are not franchise tagging Nick Foles. That means he's going to be open on the free market for my Washington Redskins, or any other team out there that needs a quarterback. And there are a few good suitors that could be available for Nick Foles. This is great news, Chris America. And now I can scream from the mountaintops, Washington Redskins, sign my most eligible quarterback bachelor, Nick Foles. Bring him home to the beautiful city, D.C. Now, how much do you think? Do you think he's going to get a Alex Smith-type contract or... Higher than that. Uh, I think it'll be an Alex Smith type contract, which is a, a good contract. Alex Smith had a great contract, and you know it wasn't one of those top tier contracts. It wasn't the Aaron Rodgers or the Matthew Stafford, where you know these guys were signing and it was record breaking deals. But it was like a three year. I wanted to say like eighty million, like a good solid contract with seventy million guaranteed. Like to me, Foles is worth that. So if he can get a similar contract to that, and I would go all in on it. Now, there could be a suitor out there that just gives him some ridiculous money. You never know. Yeah, so that means your Redskins are out, right, if he's getting that kind of money? Uh, you say that, but the whole cap situation thing, every year it seems like we talk about teams without without cap space and then – Somehow there's some cap manipulation, you cut guys, you move guys, you restructure guys, and all of a sudden the money's available. So I don't look at that as a total disadvantage, but yeah, I, the Redskins are going to go try to get somebody. Now, if it gets too pricey, yeah, they may decide just to go through the draft, but 
I'd love to see him get aggressive and put a, a, a good contract offer out to Nick Foles. Now, are they available to, to give him ridiculous money? No, they're not. But who is, right? Who, who right now is in a, sp- a place to give Nick Foles ridiculous money? I don't know. I, I don't know any of the cap situation. I feel like if I name the bad teams, I feel like they should be in good cap situation because that's why they're bad. But don't you, I don't know that you would want to sign Nick Foles to the same contract Alex Smith has, and then you're paying one injured quarterback that kind of money and one healthy quarterback that kind of money. Yeah, but an injured quarterback's not going to do anything for you. You got to you got to maybe you still got to pay him. In. You still got to pay him. So I think you guys should go the rookie quarterback route. Yeah, you still got to pay him. You got to pay no matter what he's getting paid. You think that team is hurting for money? Who? The Redskins. I mean, they they they're ne- nobody's hurting for money in the NFL, but they could be hurting right. for cap space. That's the difference. Is you don't want to wrap up so much money. Like you'd be wrapping up what? Like 40 to 50 million dollars in cap space to one position and one mm. of the players that you have can't even play for you. Mm. See, I think you're you're looking too much into this. Like I said, there's manipulation ways to get the cap to work. It's a big. It would be a big hit, and I'm not discrediting what you're saying, but at the same time, they would figure it out, man. They would figure it out. I well, believe another, in this team. Another team that's going to try and figure it out with you is going to be the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars, or is it Jaguars? The Hi, Jaguars. Hello? The Jaguars want to um, to get him as well. Do you think Doug Marone is a good coach for Nick Foles? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm lukewarm on the, the coach-quarterback combination there, but I like the team fit because it is a good defensive team. They're going to continue to be great defensively next year. The problem with the fit there is Doug Marone is more of a defensive guy. He's good for that system. I don't like what he would do with Nick Foles. I don't like that offense. I don't like the weapons. I don't it's just all around that offense needs a lot of work. I'd be afraid it would be a situation like when he went to St. Louis. And when he went to St. Louis, there was no nothing around him and he couldn't make it work. And again, they had a good defensive team in St. Louis with Jeff Fisher as his coach, but Nick Foles ended up going into obscurity because of that. So I'm not excited about Doug Marone being his potential coach, but I do like the fit with him on that team if they were able to put a couple extra pieces around him on the offensive side. And that's really what the Jaguars need to do because offensively they were inept. And I know a lot of people put blame on Blake Bortles for that, but it wasn't just Blake Bortles. It was that entire offensive just unit. They were terrible. Yeah, so the the take that everybody's having with Nick Foles – I feel like everybody's having this take is that he's a system guy, that it's Doug Peterson that's making Nick Foles great, not Nick Foles making Nick Foles great. And I, I'll i agree to disagree on that. I do think that he's not like Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady or Peyton Manning where you just put him on any team and he automatically will succeed. But I also think that he lifts up Doug Peterson's offense just as much as Doug Peterson's offense lifts him up. When I watched him in that Super Bowl, he was making really great throws. And no matter what system you are, you need to make those throws. And he was standing in the pocket. He was delivering on target while taking hits. And that's just something a system can't do for you. That's either something you have or you don't have. But I am afraid that if he goes to Doug Marone, it's going to turn out just like it did when he went to the Rams with Jeff Fisher. Yeah, Chris America, you're kind of going down the right path. And I I hate that system quarterback take. I I really do because this is a Super Bowl winning quarterback. You got to give the guy some respect there. He took the team last year, a team that was kind of falling apart, and he pulled it back together and and almost single-handedly pulled them back into the playoff picture and made a deep playoff run. And if it wasn't for Alshon Jeffrey with Butterfingers, that team could have easily came back and won and made an even deeper run than they did. So, And that wasn't on Nick Foles. And when Nick Foles was successful the previous run with the Eagles, it was not about the system because that was a Chip Kelly system that was completely different that really didn't even fit Nick Foles that well, but Nick Foles was successful in it. So to me, Nick Foles is absolutely not a system quarterback. I think he's a guy that with a resurgence. I think he's 
and maybe to a lesser extent, but I think he's kind of like a Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner was great when he was with, was with St. Louis. Then he went with the Giants for a while, and he got replaced by Eli Manning, a rookie Eli Manning that was awful. And at that point, everybody thought he was washed up. And then he goes to, to Arizona, and he has a resurgence. Nick Foles is that type of guy where it, it's about him. I think he's talented, and he just needs to be in a good situation. It doesn't need to be a, a system situation or the best situation. It just needs to be in a good situation. He can't go to a dumpster fire because – no matter what he does, it's not going to work. But if he goes to a good situation, he's going to thrive. And he's a winner. We could see that. How he played in the playoffs, how he won the Super Bowl, he is a winner. And you can't coach that winning mentality. You either have it or you don't. Johnny Menzel does not have it. Nick Foles does. I would put an investment into Nick Foles because he is worth it. Whatever team gets him is going to be better because of him. Agreed completely. I was actually mm-hmm. kind of surprised to see that they didn't at least try to franchise tag him and get a trade. I'm surprised they're just letting him walk free and clear. Can I, My take on this is that the Eagles, it's maybe a little bit of a, a nod to Nick Foles to appreciate what he did to this city. Like, if you franchise tag him and then try to get something for him and then – only certain teams would be willing to trade at that point. That's a lot different than saying you control your own destiny. You pick where you go, and you can sign whatever contract you want. And to me, it's a more respectable thing to do. Yeah, and I agree it's with the that. best thing for Nick Foles and the city of Philadelphia, the Eagles, that franchise. They owe a lot to Nick Foles because. Their franchise quarterback, Carson Wentz, went down with injury two years in a row, and these were possibly two of the best seasons they have had since the Andy Reid era and the first Super Bowl-winning season they have ever had. So that guy deserves a lot of credit, and you you do the right thing. You do the respectable thing, and, and maybe they had a conversation with him, and he said, this is what I would want, and you say... If that's what you want, that's what you get. You are welcome back in this city anytime you want because we respect you and we are appreciative of what you contributed to this team. And to me, this was the right thing to do. I think it gets messy and it gets a little selfish. And what are you going to do? Get a, a, a draft pick and say, okay, we made out in this deal. No, this guy deserves all the, the good things that are coming his way. And the Eagles did the right thing. I like that loud beard. What other hot takes you got for us this morning? All right, we're going hot takes. So I guess sticking with the quarterback theme before we go into any other sports, uh, Josh Rosen. So the GM gives him a glowing endorsement of, yes, Josh Rosen is our quarterback right now. Now, when you hear that, does that sound like it is good news for Josh Rosen? No, no, no. That's just like saying, baby, I didn't cheat on you yesterday. Right. Because yesterday <laughs> you didn't. But right. eh, today and the day before. The day before. Who knows? Yeah. I so, never cheated on you on a Monday. And to all of our listeners out there, I mean, if you've been not keeping up with this little storyline, they change coaches. Cliff Kingsbury is very high on Kyler Murray. The Cardinals have a very high draft pick. And... Josh Rosen stunk last year. Even though he was a top 10 draft pick last year, he stunk. So they are not invested in Josh Rosen. Now they can come out and say things like, oh, he is our quarterback right now. Well, that doesn't mean anything. So in my, just kind of reading between the lines here, I think Josh Rosen's going to be available for a trade, maybe draft day trade, maybe get something in return for him. Because I think the Cardinals are going to make a bold move and go after a quarterback in this draft, and I wouldn't blame him. This is the Cliff Kingsbury era, and I think he would love to have himself some Kyler Murray to start out his coaching career in the NFL. Now, later on in the show, we're going to do some thinkers and stinkers, right? Yes, we are. But I'm going to give you one that I heard this week, and it has to deal with this subject matter. Uh, Radio show host. Brandon Kravitz here in Orlando threw out a a possible trade for the Arizona Cardinals. I want you to know know if this is a thinker or a stinker uh, proposal. You ready for it? 
Yes, go ahead. All right. Josh Rosen for Antonio Brown, straight up. Hmm. So I actually heard him make that hot take, and I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Who, who don't you like it for? I, I don't like it for the Steelers. I would rather get a draft pick or another position player than I would a quarterback. Now, they do. They will need to rebuild at one point, and I, I, just, I guess this is me being very down on Josh Rosen. And again, he was a top 10 draft pick last year, but in every draft, quarterbacks, there are some that fail. And especially in the first round, there's first round busts left and right. And he did not show me enough last year for me to think that he is not going to be a bust. Now, he could prove me wrong, but I'm not trading Antonio Brown for that. I could get so many better assets or maybe such a better deal somewhere else than for Josh Rosen. And you're kind of giving up your now for your future. And I don't think Pittsburgh's ready to do that. I think they're still in now mode with uh, Juju Smith-Schuster and James Conner. They still have good position players. And Roethlisberger's at the end of his career. Like I don't think you're ready to, to plan for two to three years down the road. I think you're ready to win now. So the Steelers want to get assets that, whether it's getting a good draft pick that can help their team out next year or if it's getting a player in return that can help them out immediately. But something like that, I just don't think Rosen is the answer. All right, I can I can respect that. What if I gave you Rosen and Larry Fitzgerald? Yeah, I would take it. I would take it just because of that Larry Fitzgerald. Now, Larry Fitzgerald's at the end of his career, but you would be pairing up Ben for an extra year or two. Right. Now, I don't think that would ever happen. I know that's a good hypothetical. No, 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 that's a big hypothetical. I'm just trying to get this trade rolling. Right, right. Because yeah, I do G- I do like it. And I I Chris thought, America. I thought the Steelers have needed to go after their future quarterback for a while now, especially when the first time your quarterback goes on a radio show and says, mm, I'm thinking about retiring. That's when you're like, we need the future right now, today. I, You know, the Packers succeeded so well with this quarterback and waiting type of scenario that I don't get why other teams haven't copied it. Yeah, but the Patriots have been trying to do that for five years, and Tom Brady just won't stop being awesome. Yeah, that's true, too. But they at, always least, pick the next quarterback at least they've and gotten, waiting. At least they've gotten value out of those quarterbacks like haven't they traded all of them and, and gotten some stuff in return and they've won a few Super Bowls yeah they have they like, traded Mallet and traded uh Jimmy G so and they, then, uh, they... no no and then before that it was like Matt Castle they got a lot for yeah hmm. so, I, mean, I mean they've been able to parlay it into other things if your quarterback's not ready to go now I know they have that Oklahoma State kid is it something Lawrence is it Trevor Lawrence no Trevor Lawrence plays for Clemson wrong dude Wrong dude. Who am I thinking of? I'll, I'll look it up. Uh, yeah, I know who, who you're talking about. I just can't, the name's slipping me. But yes, he was the Oklahoma State quarterback. I think he was a mid-round draft pick uh, two years back. And uh, a lot of potential. Maybe they, they, maybe they love him. Maybe, they, they're, maybe they're in like with him, you know? You never know. All right, Chris America. You got any other... Uh, quarterback news you want to talk about before we go into our next subjects no 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 quarterback news and no news is good news yeah no news is good news i I will agree with that um we got a couple minutes here before the break um after the break like you had kind of mentioned to our listeners out there is we do have a thinker or stinker segment It is one of our favorite segments we try to drop it out each and every week chris america does a fantastic job where he's going to blindly throw me out some thinker or stinkers and i got to figure out which is which and make sure you stay tuned to that after the break oh man you know what I think we're going to go cut early. I'm going to cut to commercial break. After the break, we'll do the thinker and stinker. And then I've got some NBA talk, and this darn Bryce Harper keeps showing up in my news feed. I, I, I don't even know if I want to talk about it. I might. I'll just tease that. So, Chris America, on the flip side, is it going to be a... The thinker or the stinker? We'll find out.
When I'm working hard, I build up a thirst for sports. That's when I grab a cold 12-ounce sports radio. (sighs) 12-ounce sports radio. Quench your sports thirst. Scout team listeners and friends of the show, I've got something special for you. It looks like 12-ounce sports radio has done it again. We have partnered with Rally House. You just go to the website, 12ozsportsradio.com. Click on the banner on the right side of the page, and it will take you directly to Rally House. Rally House has some of the greatest, most unique sports items for that diehard fan, casual fan, and anybody and everybody out there that is special in your life. So go ahead and check it out. Once again, go to that website, 12ozsportsradio.com. Click on the banner to the right of the page, and you will get taken to the best sports merchandise website on all of the interweb. Ring Central features all in one phone, messaging, and video conferencing. It's easy to use with unparalleled security. Ring Central simplifies things so you can grow. Call Ring Central to speak with a representative about a price for your growing business at 877-779-3860. Again, that's 877-779-3860. Hey everybody, it's your favorite patriot, Chris America, and I want you to listen every single weekday, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and on replays from 11 a.m. to noon of Scout Team Sports. Listen, George Washington did not cross over the ocean blue in 1492 to defeat the Nazis, so you can listen to the same tired national clickbait sports stories. So once again, tune in to us every single morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and then we replay from 11 to noon. I will see you there, and God bless America. Well, listeners, thank you all once again for listening in. We are Scout Team Radio. I am Loudbeard. He is Chris America. We bring it to you hot and live each and every weekday morning, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. We also record the show and drop it as a podcast. That podcast is available on the Barn Burner Podcast Network and on our Apple Podcast, Spotify Podcast, or our website, scoutteamradio.com. We also like to get social Make sure you hit us up on our Twitter line, at Scout Team Radio. If you tweet at us at Scout Team Radio, we will look at your tweets. We will talk about them. We may even read them on the air. It is fantastic. It's a great way for you to get social with us here at Scout Team Radio. Also, if you want to check us out, we're on Facebook and Instagram at Scout Team Radio. All of those places are great to check out. But with all that being said, it is about that time of day where... Chris America is going to bring it hot with the good old... The thinker or the stinker. Chris America, well, you ready? Well, first I want to say Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph was the name I was thinking of. Yes, it was. Yep. Uh, I, I I pictured him in my head, but I could not come up with that name. It was on the tip of my tongue. Good good job there, sir. Uh, you were working All hard right, on the commercial beard. break. Well, you... um. You would like to bring up Johnny Manziel quite a bit this episode, so I'll start this thinker or stinker segment with this. Okay. He's like my Tim Tebow. Yes. Okay. So, hashtag Johnny Manziel has a contract. Then hashtag Canada legalizes hashtag weed. Then something happens. Now Johnny Football is out of a job. Hmm. Is that a thinker or a stinker? I'm going to give that a thinker. Uh, Johnny Manziel did something wrong. Now, I don't know what the contract looks like for the CFL. Uh, I would assume that they do not encourage legal or use of marijuana during the football season. They, even though it's legal and been legalized in Canada, it doesn't mean that it's okay for an athlete. 
There are a lot of substances you and I can take over the counter that are banned for athletes because it's considered performance enhancing or it's somehow banned on their their list. So I would say that there may be a correlation there. And I'm going to give that one a thinker because Johnny Manziel, he, he, you know, he's a brown sugar guy, but he's also... He likes the the wacky tobacco, you know, like that's the old man way to call it. <laughs> the wacky tobacco. That was uh, from Craft Brood Sports. You can hear them tonight at eight thirty for more uh, hot takes like that. Uh, next one, Loudbeard. I think in when OKC and Houston spread the floor and shoot a high percentage, they could beat the Warriors in a seven game series. Ooh, you knew I was gonna like this one. Uh, my answer to that is yes. Yes, this is a thinker, Chris America. I am thinking very much about this right now because, to me, out of the teams that are in the Western Conference, the Oklahoma City Thunder are one of the teams that could beat the Warriors. Now, I say could beat. Now, the percentages are a little bit lower because the Warriors are so good. But OKC has that talent, and if they can spread the floor and they do shoot a higher percentage because, you know, that's one of their, their knocks is a guy like Russell Westbrook shoots a lower percentage than and he's shooting one of the lower percentages of his career. If he can get going and he gets hot and some of the other players, all the role players and uh, another superstar like Paul George can really get it going, they can beat the Warriors in a seven-game series. Same thing Same thing with the, um, the Nuggets. I think they're part of that. It wasn't mentioned in the tweet. The Rockets were the other one. But the Nuggets, to me, another team that could get hot enough to beat the Warriors. Now, to, to me, the Oklahoma City Thunder have the highest percentage and the Rockets, I'm, I'm believing less and less in the Rockets because I just I think they're a little bit of a mess. But if they pull it together, shoot a high percentage, and, and get back to that form that they were at last year, they also would have a chance. So, yes, definitely a thinker, Chris America. Well, if you remember, these are the last two teams to take Oklahoma City. Well, okay, Cleveland did it too when they beat them in seven. But OKC had them on the ropes when they won the 73 games. Now, granted, they had Kevin Durant, which they don't have now. And Houston had him on the ropes last season when they were up 3-1. to one. They could have beat them in a five-game series or a six-game series. And uh, they just fell short because they didn't have Chris Paul. He got injured. So this is not a, a stretch. And Ian Hall from at Ian Hall saying, or at Ian Sane Sports, uh, House and Shambles podcast. We both agree with you. That's a thinker status, no doubt. All right, here here comes one from another Ian Loudbeard. Are you ready for it? Yeah, go ahead. Pineapple pizza isn't for everybody. You need a certain level of intelligence to really vibe to its flavor. Yeah, that's a thinker. That's a thinker. No, uh, hold on. Let me. Let me. Mm, no, I'm thinking it's a stinker. Can you repeat it one more time? Yeah, yeah. Pineapple pizza isn't for everybody. You need a certain level of intelligence to really vibe to its flavor. All right, so I, I thought about this one, and it, it took a little bit of extra thought, Chris America. I'm going to give it a stinker. I'm giving it a, th- a stinker. Uh, yeah, no. I'm, I'm, I'm an open-minded guy. I'm good with putting all kinds of crazy stuff on food. So, yeah, no, it's a stinker. I still don't think you understand what he was saying. Oh, then thinker. Whatever. <laughs> I'm going to give it a thinker because when I see people say, like, what, pineapple on a pizza? That is a travesty, I think. Okay, your mind's too closed. You're not open to new flavors, new new life, and you want everything to be inside of a box. To me, I won't go as far as to say they lack intelligence, but they're... They they live in their little box, and I'm Chris America, and I live outside the box. I'm always looking for new ways and new things to experience life. And uh, every once in a while, not always, I can go for some pineapple and ham on my pizza. Yeah, absolutely. See, I'm kind of like that comedian Gallagher. I like to take sledgehammers and smash your box and pineapples and watermelons. I do all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right, this take was from two days ago. So it might not ring true tonight or this morning after last night, but I'll read it anyway, see what you think. All the right. Lakers really miss Lonzo Ball. Uh, that's a stinker. 
That's a stinker. Uh, yeah, do they miss him? A little bit. Do they really miss him? No, they don't really miss him. He's just another guy at this point. He hasn't proven enough to be anything more than that. And, you know, last night the Lakers do. They, they, they get a big victory. Of course, LeBron James has a, a big game, and that helps him lead, lead them to that victory. Could they use Lonzo Ball? Yeah, he's a player. He can help him out. But he's not a difference maker, and that is why that is a stinker of a a tweet there. And I, yeah, absolutely 100% stinker. I thought you were going to go three for three with agreeing with Skip Bayless, but you saved yourself from not doing it. Nope. Nope. You've been, you've been Skip, giving him thinkers. Different... You guys have been, you've been giving him thinkers the last couple of times we've done this segment. Yeah, I mean, he says a lot of dumb stuff, but every once in a while he's got a nugget of truth in there. And so when I think it on a Skip Bayless tweet, that's because that's one of his better tweets. But, you know, uh, this one is definitely a stinker. All right, last one, Ladbeard. I should really freak out my neighbors by posting missing pet King Cobra or pet Bengal Tiger signs around the neighborhood. That is a thinker. Uh, I always like uh, messing around with people, and a good time that would be. Uh, it would create quite the stir, and I'm sure there'd be some sort of, hy sort of hysteria. Um, but it's all in good fun. It's all in good fun. So that would be 100% a thinker. Of course it's a thinker, because the guy that tweeted it is a real American with real creativity. And I think I should do it, Loudbeard. I, th I think I'm going to do that today, because that was my post. I saw a missing cat sign yesterday, and I thought... Hmm, how funny would it be if that said missing Bengal tiger or missing, like, really poisonous snake? And then I try to think of, like, what would be a crazy poisonous whoa, snake to have whoa, loose in your neighborhood? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was your post? Hold, hold yeah, on yeah. a second. That, you? You did that? Just when uh, I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. Okay. All right. Well, moving on. Well, Loudbeard, we're getting some reactions to, to this. Uh, Mark... He's texting in saying pineapple pizza is gross. Get get outside the box there, Mark. Come come join the fun life, all right? It's a lot more fun when you occasionally put some pineapple on your pizza. Uh, however, he did like the AAF versus XFL idea you had yesterday. So oh. maybe maybe your team, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what Oh my gosh. So the AAF and the XFL need to merge and just like pineapple and ham needs to merge onto a pizza. These are both in the same category. So, Mark, you need to make up your mind. Which side are you on? <laughs> uh, and then, of course, Craft Brew Sports, they're excited that they made it to your thinker status. So they're, they're responding to us. They said, Mama, I made it. Oh, boy. You know, that's a big time for them, making it on Loudbeard's thinker status. That's the pinnacle of... Uh, all sports talk radio right there. And once again, and you had mentioned I mean, there this. really is only, there's only one place to go now, just down. Like, yeah. you've reached, this is your peak. This is your apex. Yeah. And last night, I think, was the apex for the Lakers. I really do. I think that's as good as it gets, is them beating teams like the New, uh, New, New England, the New Orleans New Pelicans. Orleans Pelicans. Yeah, the New England Patriots. That would have been a big win for the Lakers. Oh, man. Could you imagine Gronk on... On James, oh boy, that's two that, that the, the two athletic guys. That'd be like a big heavyweight matchup. I'd love to see it. I think James would end up winning. I think he'd end up killing him. But I, I'd love, I'd lo just love to see Gronk get physical with LeBron James. Yeah. Now, what if they fought in the UFC? Gronk take him oh, every time. Gronk would kill him. Gronk would. I don't kill know. Him. LeBron's in good shape though. And he's fast. He is like, in good shape, but he's not used to the hit. Used to them. Yeah, but Gronk's kind of a little beat up in his older age. He looks like a little slower out there. Um, I mean, have I you know. have you seen LeBron like falls over from like the slightest of touches, and it's totally legitimate. He's not taking falls at all. Like I would never think that a guy like LeBron James would flop. So if guys that barely touch him make him wobble and fall down, what is a punch to the face gonna do? Hmm. I don't know. I. Uh I'm going LeBron James. I'm just saying, in a UFC fight, I think LeBron's got a little bit more athleticism on him, and you're not giving him credit, and he's still a big dude. Uh, Gronk, yeah, I, I mean, Gronk seems like he would take him, but I'm taking my dark horse. I'm taking LeBron James. He's got he's to win this. He's got to win this? 
Yeah, he's got to win so. this. No, no, I, I'm I putting think, money on it. Let's I think make this Ronk happen. Will this grab is him like with a, his big old ham hocks. This is like the McGregor uh, Mayweather fight all over again. I'm I'm Team LeBron. Hashtag it. Six foot six, two hundred sixty eight pounds. Ugh, no way. He's oh, used yeah. to hand fighting. He's used to punching people, knocking people around, blocking like that kind of stuff. LeBron, like he would just get a, a like Gronk would just let out a deep sigh, and LeBron would fall over. Oh, all right. Well, the Pelicans didn't didn't have a chance against the LeBron Lakers last night. Uh, LeBron gets a late clutch three pointer to kind of seal the victory. It ends up being one twenty five to one nineteen. Uh, the top scorer on the Pelicans was Julius Randle, a former Laker. And, yeah, uh, good luck for the Lakers last night. Let's see if they can build some momentum off of that, that win. But Anthony Davis still on the, uh, the discount minutes, played 21 minutes, but he got 22 points. So, I mean, he's – I do like that he's going out and playing. He's not going out and playing for long, but when he's on the floor, he's producing. Now, do you? I didn't watch the game, but do you think he kind of went over at like when they called the timeout? He went over and just like high fived LeBron and was like, "Hey, man, see this you is soon." What I can do for you next year? <laughs> you keep an eye on this. Check this out. We're gonna be playing together soon. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm. So, well, let's see what the LeBron Lakers if they can build on that momentum. That'll be awesome. Another team that needs some momentum to build on but hasn't figured it out is the Boston Celtics. Their fourth straight loss last night. And they can only muster a measly 92 points as they go up against the Trailblazers. And the Trailblazers finish the game 97-92 with a big victory over the Celtics. What's going on in Boston, Chris America? Uh, a, a good old-fashioned meltdown. And it's one of epic proportions right now. I don't know what the answers are. And this is where you start seeing the medal of a team. And I don't think they're going to have it. I think they're going to just start. There's going to be some infighting. A guy like Kyrie is not not down for this kind of thing. He's not the kind of guy that's going to get in there and, and become a leader. Now, granted, it's not all his fault. I'm going to find a way to blame this on LeBron. He, he grew up under LeBron, and that's the way LeBron is, is let me blame my teammates and let me pout and get, get angry and not talk to the media. So, I mean, he's doing exactly the way LeBron would handle this situation. So Come on, you always tie LeBron into this, don't you? I, I, it's always yeah, got to be about LeBron. Got, I'm a LeBron hater. I'm a LeBron hater. Self-admitted. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But, yeah, so Trailblazers, they get the best of the Celtics. The Celtics have now, they, they're losing on the road. They're losing at home. They, they, they have no answers right now. They really don't. Um, I saw a little bit of this game, and pregame they were talking about how Al Horford in the last five games has had a really solid five games. His stats are up. He's been playing well. Um, I, don't, I didn't see what he finished at last night. Um, Kyrie had a good game last night. Kyrie ended up with 31 points. It's just, where are the other guys? Gordon Hayward is not the same Gordon Hayward he once was. That injury has really hurt him. The fit hasn't been good. So Gordon Hayward's basically disappeared. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are these young, up-and-coming guys that we have talked so much about, and they aren't really contributing the way, where, the way they should be contributing. Scary Terry, uh, he's been getting some minutes, and he's been just doing okay, doing okay. So there are some good pieces on this Boston Celtics team, but yeah, they're not fitting together. And, you know, last year we thought they overperformed for where their talent was, and it, a lot of it was put on, hey, Brad Stevens is a great coach. Look what he's doing, coach of the year, all this great stuff. Well, what's going on this year? Is Are they maybe not listening to Brad Stevens anymore? Is Kyrie becoming a little bit of a decisive or a divisive um, team member? I don't know what it is, but there's something going on in Boston, and it ain't good, and a four-game losing streak – it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't bode well for their playoff chances. Yeah, I can see them. They're definitely going to make the playoffs, but first round sweep could be coming Ooh. their way. Now, if they go out first round sweep, and, and that's what I meant, I guess their championship aspirations are not, it doesn't bode well for that. We know they're going to make the playoffs, but you're right. If they go in and the, they get swept in the first round, this would be considered a total disaster for the Celtics. Yeah, and it'll be a tough sell for Kyrie, and and you know Ainge is gonna have to work his magic to bring in Anthony Davis, and then once Anthony Davis is there, they're gonna have to 
figure something out because Anthony Davis isn't going to want to stick around for this type of season. So he'll he'll probably bounce if they turn in another season like this. So like I said, I don't know what the answer is today, and I don't know what the answer is in the future either. No, absolutely not. Um, all right, well, I'm going to move on from the Celtics, even though you're uh... – Kyrie losing again is good for me to talk about because you hate on my LeBron so much. But uh, last night, uh, a team loses that helps us out, Chris America. The Charlotte Hornets, who are battling for that last playoff spot in the Eastern Conference with our Orlando Magic, take a big loss last night to Houston. And ah, that makes me excited because even though the Magic were terrible and lost to the Knicks the other night, we, we're still in this. And I got to not give up hope. I got to keep my faith alive for our Orlando Magic. Well, I got some bad news for you, Ladbeard. No, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Go ahead. I I think the Warriors are going to come in angry. And they didn't start DeMarcus Cousins yesterday. He's going to come in. And I think they're going to take that loss to the Heat and say, you know what? We just got beat by the Heat, but we're not getting beat by these Orlando Magic. And it was a bad way they lost to the Heat because... Dwayne Wade, even though he's an old man, he still has some magic left in that hat of his. And he is able to pull out just a little bit more as he makes a acrobatic circus-style three-point shot at the buzzer to beat the Warriors, man. That was a, a an, one, number one, it was an amazing shot. Number two, that's a devastating way to lose against the Heat. Yeah, and so they get to turn around in 24 hours and play another basketball game. I think they're going to come out guns blazing. All they're just going to put the gas down to the metal, pedal to the metal and just throttle the magic. Nah, see I am going to go with a different take here. I think they're going to be emotionally just exhausted from that terrible loss and they're going to come out a little flat. And we all know that the Orlando Magic play up to talent. And so this is a big game for the Magic. It's at home. It's against the best team in the league. And this is, a, this is one of those games where I think the Magic are going to surprise us. And the Warriors may sleep a little bit on this Orlando Magic team. And they're already a little bit, you know, a little emotionally distraught after that terrible uh, buzzer beater loss they took last night. Well, I personally decided to ride whatever wave the Magic are currently on. So if if they win tomorrow, I'm going to be high on the Magic. I'm going to be talking them up. They're going to win the championship. But if they're low on the Magic, which I am now because they're low right now, I'm going to play this. Oh, oh no! We suck again! And right now we do suck, Loudbeard. And I'm going to stick to that. And we're going to lose. We're going to get blown out by like 70 points. Okay, I guarantee we're not going to get blown out by 70 points. I guarantee it. Right now, you're, I'm calling my shot. It will not be a 70-point blowout, Chris. The loud beer lock of the week. That is the, the lead pipe lock, whatever you call that thing. <laughs> oh, wow. That's what a are we like in like a What are we in, like a uh, zombie apocalypse where you got to use a lead pipe to lock the doors? Uh, yeah. Got to be prepared. If a handles. zombie apocalypse breaks out tomorrow, I've got lead pipe locked things all over the place so i'm prepared <laughs> oh loud beard oh chris america okay last make sure you little... just give some brown sugar yeah no more brown sugar for me brown sugar there is one guy that is going to be able to buy a lot of brown sugar in the near future and i have talked about him way too much and that is bryce harper but a new dark horse team has emerged as a Tampa possible Bay Rays. favorite let's the go san francisco giants <sighs> not the Tampa Bay Rays. The San Francisco Giants have swooped in, and they are now in negotiations. They have a 10-year deal apparent on the table, and this could be the team that comes in and takes Bryce Harper. And the Phillies came out, and they made comments kind of to the sort of, we're going to have a resurgence year with or without Bryce Harper, which are terms to me that mean they are prepared not to sign this guy if it does not work out. And whether they're using that as a negotiation tool or if they're just saying it because they don't feel like they're going to get them, all of a sudden the San Francisco Giants are real players in the Bryce Harper lottery or sweepstakes or whatever you call this. No, man, you're a parent. You know exactly what that is. That's kind of like the you think that 
the things that your kids are excited for may not happen. So you're trying to get them excited for something you know you can deliver on, or at least you're going to try and deliver on. Like, hey, looks like it's going to rain all day and we can't make it to Universal, but we got lots of video games to play, guys, and we're going to have a lot of fun today, no matter what. Are you with me? Mm, good example. That happens. That's exactly what the Phillies are doing. Oh, the Phillies. I They're Honestly, saying, though. Hey, looks like it's going to rain. We're not going to get Bryce Harper, but we got a resurgence coming, guys, and we're going to have fun anyways. That's all right. They're going to save so much money for their brown sugar if they don't pay 10 years, $350 million for Bryce Harper. But Chris America, guess what time it is? It's time to go home. It's time for you to get the heck out of here. Great show. Thank you all listening in. Yes, please tune in to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Podbean, wherever you find podcasts. Or just simply go to scoutteamradio.com if you ever miss an episode. See you. Peace.